My next slide, it's again about the same task, about the polynomial interpolation. So filling the gaps between the fixed points and fixed values. It's a big slide, yes, I know. Don't get scary. I, just, I mean, like, a, even, though, even though the slide is big, there's a lot of structure in what's gonna, be, gonna appear on that slide. So if you pick up the structure, the amount of the material there shouldn't be threatening. Uh, so I'm gonna discuss now, right now, the, what is called Lagrange polynomials. Lagrange polynomials. Uh, which also serve the same task of polynomial interpolation. And that's a task, I mean, with the help of Lagrange polynomials, you can solve the task without any, you can solve the task without any row echelon forms or any system of linear equations. But it's a very cleverly crafted set of polynomials. Look at this. Again, I start with the assumption that we have endpoints. I have endpoints, and in fact, I have n different values. For these endpoints, for these endpoints, look what the Lagrange polynomials are. Uh, it's lengthy expression, but there is a structure in that expression, and I'll try to explain the structure to you. Look at this. The first polynomial of Lagrange, first polynomial of Lagrange, and this n indicates the order of polynomials. So when you look at endpoints, there will be n different polynomials of Lagrange of order n. If you have like n take one, if you have three points, it will be three polynomials of order three. If you have four points, it will be four polynomials of order four. And they're basically in to totally distinct set of sets of polynomials. So look what I'm going to put here. Here's my polynomial. It will be a quotient. In the, in the numerator, I have this linear brackets. x take x2, x take x3, x take xn. So basically, I have linear brackets with every number here except for the first one. And in the denominator, I have similar brackets where number x is replaced with the first number. Like this. Second polynomial, second Lagrange polynomial, listen to the structure. It's again a product of linear brackets with every point in this set except so the second, the second number this time. Look at this. X take x1, x take x3, you see, x2 is missing. And then all of the linear products like this. And the denominator, it's basically the numerator where this variable x is replaced with the missing value, x2. Here's a structure. So you build n polynomials like this. You take this linear brackets and you're missing one point from that linear bracket. So the nth polynomial of Lagrange is like this. You take all of the brackets where you see where you stop at the n take one. So you, this time you're missing the last point. And the denominator, denominator, it's where you vary where the variable is replaced with the missing value. Every such Lagrange polynomial, every such Lagrange polynomial, it's a polynomial of, of degree n take one with real coefficients. Right, because we have n take one brackets in the numerator, which brings you the polynomial of degree at most n take one. The value at denominator, even though it looks large, it's just a number. It's just a coefficient. That's the first point. The second point is if you are in the setting of what we discussed with you on the discussed with you on the previous slide, if it's all of the points here distinct, the value in the denominator makes sense because none of the brackets there vanish. None of the brackets there vanishes, sorry. So each polynomial makes sense. But the main thing, the main observation about the Lagrange polynomial is this. If you take this first polynomial, for instance, if you take first polynomial, and if you sub in, if you sub in into this polynomial x1, x1 value, what that will give you? If you do that, 
your enumerator will be identical to the denominator and the value will be 1. But if you sub in any other value from this list, one of the factors here will be 0 and the polynomial gives you 0 value. So the Lagrange polynomials, they are, it's, a, it's a wise construction. It's not like just you can't come up with this incidentally. That's why we have a name next to it. It's a, it's a polynomials which give you one on, on one value from this set and the zero on any other value from that set. That's how I fix this. My Lagrange polynomial, jth Lagrange polynomial, on the jth point returns one. And my Lagrange polynomial, jth Lagrange polynomial, on any other value, k, returns 0, as long as k is different from j. Having these Lagrange polynomials, solving polynomial interpolation problem becomes just a straightforward writing out the polynomial. Look at this. I call it a lemma. You like the word lemma, right? Okay, I I'm going to use it more often now. <laughs> what is a lemma? What is a lemma? It's just a fancy name for statement. I mean, I, I use this name so many, so many times already. Just that's the first time you just it, it occurred to you to ask the question. Yeah, okay. All right. There's also the, the name. I don't know. If there's an even fancier name. We just call. I think it's called like this lemata. Yeah, it's it's like I mean, if you want to be really cool in mathematics, you can use the lemata. Uh, no, no, I'm not that cool, you know. <laughs> right. So here we go. If you are within the setting, you have this n values, sorry, n points and n values. If you build directly a polynomial of this structure, look at this. You sum across j's from 1 to n. You take these p values from this set and you multiply by the Lagrange polynomials, like this. And here, here's the expansion, actually, for the sigma symbol. Here's the expansion. P1 times first Lagrange polynomial. P2 times second Lagrange polynomial. And all the way until Pn value from this set times the nth Lagrange polynomial. If you just simply take the polynomial like this, this will be the polynomial which solves the polynomial interpolation problem. It, this polynomial, this this way crafted polynomial at these values delivers, sorry, at this point delivers these values. And that's a direct verification. Look at this. It's a very direct verification. If I use p of x1, if I want to compute p of x1, so across this expression, across this expression, I sub in x1 here, here, and here. Here's a substitution. P1, first, poly, uh, first L, L1 polynomial of x1, P2, L2 polynomial of x1, all the way until Pn, Ln polynomial of x1. And in this expansion, in this expansion, well, every term vanishes. Here it is, because of that. Except for the first one, which is 1. So 1 times P1 is a P1 value. As easy as this. So if you take the value px2, again I sub an x2 value now, is my substitution of, for the x2 value. Again, by using this property of the Lagrange polynomials, I claim that this will be 0, this will be 1, and the rest here will be 0. So only p2 number will stay. And you can do it n times. You can do it n times, and your xn value will effectively give you the same argument. Here's your expansion, and that's the pn. Here's your expansion that delivers the pn value. I just want to demonstrate this once. I'd like to use this, I mean, my example, my very first example I solved with you today. 